Welcome back. I'm Ted Thomas. In the past 30 years, I've been involved in an alternative real estate category called tax liens and tax deeds. Now, we sure use this 100% financing and financing when we sell those properties back into the marketplace. So the tax deed part of the business is very entrepreneurial and profitable for those that know how to create and think about an exit strategy before they buy. It's one of the keys, have an exit strategy before you buy. So today I'm going to answer your question, what does 100% financing mean on a house? So this is going to be important for you because you might want to do it someday. As you can imagine, if a seller is willing to sell and give a buyer a 100% loan on a property, let's face it, there's probably going to be a lineup of people that would like to buy that property. It'll probably sell quickly if it's a single family home. But more than likely, there's dozens, really hundreds of buyers that would be attracted to that property. After all, no down payment means 100% financing. And that's sort of the dream of late night television. And that's been broadcast for past 20 to even 30 years. As a business, I've been involved in investing with tax defaulted property for decades. So financing on the property is an important part of the selling because it accelerates the sale. So it works like this. First of all, the local government repetitiously levies property taxes and the local treasurer and also the tax collector, they attempt to collect those tax. So first thing they do is they levy the tax, then they try to collect the tax. And if they don't collect the tax, what they're going to do is they're going to confiscate that property. And when they do confiscate, they've seized it, they're going to resell it back into the marketplace at a very low price. By that I mean, they're going to try and sell it for 60%, 70%, maybe an 80% discount. All right. So the county commissioners are the ones that are in charge of all this, that and the board of supervisors, either one authorizes the treasurer to go out and confiscate those properties. So when they take over the property, what they do is they take the property from the private owner. And then what they do is they drop, they absolutely drop the loan. They cancel the loan off the property. So once it's been canceled, then the person that buys the property buys the property with no mortgage on it. So buyers have been receiving deeds at these auctions for absolutely decades. So without a mortgage, that makes it a property that's quite easy to sell. All right. So we have a proven and tested pretty much a systematic system to sell these auction properties. And one of the things that we do is we really do a good job of marketing it. But more importantly than that, we make sure that the seller is considering installment sales or even 100% financing on a house. Now, what does 100% financing mean? It means that the person that's buying the property is going to get 100%. They don't have to have a down payment. If you're a seller and you're accepting 100% financing, you're not getting a down payment. So that means that's a high risk situation. All right. Now, who wants these kind of deals? Well, people that don't have money traditionally would love to buy with 100% down or a small down payment and then have you lend them the money. So they like that. So this kind of thing works if you're in the in the business of trying to sell. Now, banks typically loan 80% of the value. So that means the buyer needs a 20% down. Now, when the economy isn't so good, the federal government gets involved and they'll make a lesser down payment. They might finance as much as 97%. All right, but very rare will you find someone that will do 100% financing. So two reasons for doing 100% financing. One, it's a difficult property to sell. And number two, the person that, that's selling it may have a property that they paid too much money for. But the point is, financing is going to make a big difference. So the government with their low down payment, only 3% down, well, they're going to give a real boost to the marketplace right away as soon as they come in and they'll buy those loans. All right, now getting a loan from a bank requires a lot of qualification. What does that mean? Well, you're going to have to have a good FICO score and you're going to have to have a good payment history. You're going to have to have a job. You're going to have to have employment history and so on. Now, a lot of people have that, but unfortunately, there's a lot of people that don't. Probably 20% of the market is not able to finance. In other words, they can't go to the bank and borrow money. Number one, because they might not earn enough money. Number two, they might not have a good FICO score. Number three, they might have had a bad payment history or maybe they just had a divorce. In other words, they really haven't paid attention to their financing and so uh, their financial situation and now they can't get financing. So if you'll provide installment sales and financing for people, you're going to be able to sell quickly. So what am I talking about today? Well, this episode is all about what does 100% financing on a house mean? It means 
means that the seller is willing just to accept payments. Now, not everyone that met the bank requirements is going to want the property because 100% financing means the prices uh, on the on the interest rate is going to be high and it probably means they're going to have to make big payments. So putting down payments is important and for the security for the seller, it's hugely important. All right, so let's say the homeowner wants to sell. So the seller, the owner wants to sell. They could advertise 100% financing and they could sell the property that way. Now they're taking a big risk because a person that moves into that property could move out at any time because they've got no risk. They could just walk away. All right. Now, if you're going to buy through a bank, you've got a lot of things to do. First of all, you're going to have to qualify. Secondly, you're going to have to get an appraisal. Next thing you're going to have to do is do a home inspection. You're going to have to have the bank approve the loan. So all that's going to take time. So sellers who decide that they're going to do installment sales, well, they're going to do quite well because they can make the deal today. They don't have to wait for a bank appraisal. They don't have to wait for a home inspection. They don't have to do any of that. They're going to be able to move right into it. Now, if you haven't done that, of course, you're either going to have to hire an attorney to make the contract or you're going to have to go to a title company so they can make them. But in both cases, those people are qualified to do that. Now, I'm answering the question, what does 100% financing mean? It means that the seller has got huge risk. For the buyer, there's little or no risk. All right, little or no risk is what you'd like if you're a buyer. All right, however... It has challenges because if you don't make a payment, you're going to have the property, you're going to lose the property quickly because most sellers will figure out right away that they're not going to pass the title to you. They'll sell the property on a contract and they'll keep the title. If they keep the title and you miss a payment, they'll simply evict you. So there's risks on both sides with 100% financing on a house. All right. Now, seller financing is very popular in the business I'm in with tax defaulted properties. Those properties will sell quickly with low down payments and the seller doing the financing because it attracts a whole marketplace that's willing to accept less than brand new and less than pristine properties. Why will they accept that? Because they need a place to stay and they need someone to finance them. Will they negotiate? No, there's very little negotiations on sale price and very little negotiation on the, the interest rate simply because those people need to get into property. All right, now whenever you're a buyer, you need to know that you're going to have to pay taxes in addition to your, to your installment payment and you're going to have to pay insurance. Both of those are going to be included and every contract will have those in there. So you not only have to make the installment payment, but you have to pay the property taxes and you're going to have to pay the insurance. That's just normal. All right, now will everybody ask for 100% financing? They won't ask for it, but they should sure like to have it. But if you're willing to sell with 100% financing, you're taking a huge risk. I think there's a uh, a risk for the buyer the same way because either way if the payments are too high or they haven't put any down payment there's a tendency for people to want to walk away from the loan if they do that their credit's just going to get a lot worse all right so we mentioned the risk now what's the reward the reward is huge because you're going to make high interest on the loan and you're probably going to get the money that you want out of the property so 100 percent financing usually means the property's a little on the high price side or that person wants to get rid of it quickly. All right, if there's no down payment involved, you'll have people waiting in line that want to buy that property. Are those people qualified? I doubt if those people are going to be qualified. They're not going to be able to qualify at a bank, that's for sure, because they're going to have a low FICO score and nobody will touch them. All right, if you do touch them, you better make sure that they've got a good job, they've been at that job for a while, and they're making good money. Those people have already been rejected. They're rejected for a reason. Either they got a poor FICO score, or they haven't been on the job long enough, or they don't earn enough money, or they have messed up some other payment thing, they didn't make their payments, or they've been through a, a recent divorce. Uh, there could be a lot of problems with a person that's trying to buy your property, so you have to pay attention to that. So let's use an example of Mr. and Mr. America. So they show up, and they've got a poor FICO score. Well, that isn't the end of the world, all right? So then you talk to them, and you find out that maybe you've got four kids, but then you further talk to them, and you find out they've both got good jobs. All right, they've both got good jobs that they've had for a long time. Problem is, they're not responsible. By that I mean, they run up their credit cards. They don't pay their credit cards on time. So that gives them a poor FICO score. Or they've had some recent divorce two or three years ago or something like that. Or maybe they had a bankruptcy. Something's gone wrong. They could be very good people, but they've had bad things happen in their life. All right, now, how are you gonna handle that? All right, if they got a down payment, you're in great shape, you get a down payment, then you can use an installment sale. What if they don't have a down payment? What are you going to do then? Well, you could turn them down, 
But if you had, for example, a nurse standing in your front door and you had a police officer standing in your front door, they're both in stable businesses. And if they've both been in the same place for a long time, you got a good chance that they're making good enough money that they'll not only pay you, but they'll pay you on time. But they haven't got the money for a down payment. So then you could structure the financing so that they made a bigger down payment and continue to make that bigger payment for the first one or two years of the loan. For example, if you needed ten or $12,000 down, you could say you've got to pay an extra 500 a month for the first two years of the installment loan. So they're still getting in with 100% financing, which is what they want, but their payment is just going to be higher for the first two years. Why is it higher? Because they're building their down payment in. The more down payment that they put on that property, the less chance you ever have of getting the property back. All right, so there's still plenty of risk for everybody, whether it's 100% financing for the buyer, there's risk, and for the seller, there's risk. So those need to be talked about and discussed, and then you put it all together in a contract. Now, where do you get the contract? Well, you could hire an attorney to do that. There's nothing wrong with that. And you could go to a title company because they're familiar with this kind of thing. It happens all the time. There's nothing new about this. And there's nothing new about people paying their down payment every month until they build up enough down payment. Meanwhile, they're living in the property. So what kind of person wants to do that? Well, the person that has a family, the person that, uh, the person that wants gratification right now will do that because they want a property now and they want to build in, into the market. All right, so there's still plenty of good people out there, but you're going to have the job of qualifying them. Now, my qualification is this. Have they been on the job one or two years? All right, that's good. I think earning good money can pay for it. That's even better. So those are my two biggest qualifications. Now, if you don't check those two, you certainly don't want to do the deal. So let's assume they pay on time. That's all going to be very good. You keep reminding them and make sure the contract states they have to pay taxes on the way. They have to pay insurance on the way. And guess what? You want to make sure that you transfer the property to them only on the contract, not with the title. You do not want to move the title to they have the ownership of that property. You want to maintain ownership and keep the title until they've given you all your money. If you don't get all your money, they can cause you problems of going through foreclosure. In some states, that could take one or two years to get the foreclosure completed. And meanwhile, you'll be paying the taxes and you'll be paying the insurance. So you want to make sure this is done with a contract of sale that you did at either a title company or that you did with an attorney. Otherwise, you're both taking on huge risks. All right, so you're getting the idea. Does this work? Yes, it works in all the markets. So my name is Ted Thomas. I'm going to finish this video now by reminding you, if you go to an auction, you want to be very cautious. Number one, don't purchase a property that you haven't seen. In other words, boots on the ground. Now, if you haven't seen it, make sure someone you know has seen the property. The other big caution is don't get in a bidding war and start pushing the bidding up. What you want to do is maintain your price, and you will maintain the price if you do one thing. Always figure out your exit strategy, what you're going to sell it for. What do I mean by that? If the property has a value of 100000 can you sell it for seventy five? Can you sell it for less than that and do it quickly? Well, then you want to make sure that your bidding price is substantially below the price that you know that the value of the property. I'm Ted Thomas, and right below me, there's a free gift. Why don't you take advantage of that right now?